tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Well, how did we achieve this? This is a trivial looking animation for people who know how to create N particles, but I did not use the N particle workflow here. Uh, I have a cube. The cube serves as the collider. I have two curves, alpha and omega, and uh, the particles emit from alpha and omega. And they don't emit, if I go to FX here, uh, N particles, they don't emit from that object. But uh, this is something I could do as well. But I use Bifrost Graph for the whole simulation here. So I have three objects and nothing else really. A Skydome light to render this in Arnold later. Actually, I don't need that perspective camera. And this group here is a camera which uh, serves as a turntable camera. It rotates around that scene and uh, since particle emissions work in the sequence of time from zero to whatever and not uh, back I had to reverse the video in order to make that surprising effect of alpha and omega appearing at the end of the animation that's something you typically don't do in a simulation system like Maya you do it in post for example, in just uh, any kind of uh, video editor. Okay, so no n particles involved here. Actually, there are involved, but we don't see them as n particles and we don't treat them as n particles. The simplicity is really amazing. Let's open the Bifrost Graph editor where we see the nodes. When you drag and drop the curves, both curves together into the scene, you get something like this input by path and uh, an output when you when uh, the bifrost graph editor sees curves it, it uses strands as the output which is uh, very elegant because when you right mouse click here uh, and you want to see the pore type it's an amino object it's an object that means it's an object it's not a floating float number uh, it's not a boolean um, expression here but uh, it is just a standard object and object can object nodes can go into the simulation of particles and uh, they are just the sources so so this is the first connection we're going to do these are the curves and this is the simulation of the particles now the particles have an output and we just drag the output into the input of the output node and then you see a particle node here everything is blue no error message everything is fine here so this is the first thing we do do we see anything here yes we do the particles fall down they obviously don't have a collider yet we don't want them to fall for example we, we need to deal with uh, a little bit more specialities and they sit here as you can see on the right hand side in the parameter section here you can switch off the gravity for example it currently is set to 9.8 minus 9.8 I just set it to zero so the particles will just emit for, from the curves and not do anything else but I need to connect the particle solver settings to the settings beautiful no error message everything is fine blue light blue goes into light blue beautiful so what is happening now so the particles emit from the curves and nothing else and the camera rotates around this whole object 
They still don't recognize the cube, that's obvious, because we need to do something with the cube. And the cube is, you just drag and drop the cube into this window, and then it lands here as the P uh, polygon cube shape 1 with a mesh output. And the mesh output goes into, because it's a collider, into the collider of the particles. So the simulation engine sees the cube as a collision object. And now we're almost done. You see how the particles fill up the cube? When I work with n particles, I immediately, at the very start, I give them a lifespan. Uh, I restrict their lifespan to, say, one minute or one second or whatever. So uh, I cannot do this uh, with this setup here. I need more modifications. But uh, you see, you get the point. When we render this in Arnold, I have a sky dome light in the scene. And I render this now. I see the cube. Well, we need to hide the cube. It's still active as a collider. So let me wind this back a little bit and now render it with Arnold. I can render it in the viewport actually. For the Arnold rendering, you don't need that connection here, but uh, in order to give them color, which we won't do here, you need to connect the particles to the points input of the Ar Arnold point setting. There are several Arnold nodes in um, Bifrost Graph, so we need to set Arnold point settings. And the out points go here into that cross because it creates a new input for the output, out points. Now, uh, it doesn't change anything here, but you get uh, more options to color these things, etc. Then you go to the render settings and render this with a camera which uh, circles around that object while it develops and then you go to your video editing program and reverse the whole animation. That's all there is. Have a nice day. Bye bye.